So one of my um, poetry books that I have in my collection is a book of poetry, uh, translated poetry, or with uh, translations side by side, of Dafford Aquilum, who's one of the most famous poets in, or bards really, in Wales. Um, and he was born um, about 50 years before Chaucer. And he's kind of a contemporary, like um, I think... A lot of people who've studied English are really familiar with Chaucer and his um, sort of very um, bawdy tales of knights and doing this and that. Um, you get the picture. Um, Daffa Daquillum is basically Welsh, the Welsh answer to that. But kind of hilariously, most of his poems are really long poems about various women. Or getting drunk. Uh, that's basically <laughs> basically the themes of it, um, wrapped up in lots of lovely language about song thrushes and behind that I could see Morved. Oh, and, oh wasn't she looking great? Um, he's quite an interesting character. Like You can really definitely get his character from his creative works, which is really nice. Um, I think there's few people who do the same thing. One, one person I can think of who does a similar thing is the composer Trulan O'Carolan, who was in Ireland, medieval age, and from the like the descriptions of his uh, pieces of um, harp um, compositions, you can definitely tell he's a character. It's like O'Carolan sneaks out and tells his landlady off, and oh no, he's being kicked out as the next one. You know that sort of thing. Um, so I think it's nice, I'm not particularly into historic literature, but I think it's nice when you can get the character of a person from their poetry or from their music centuries and centuries later. Um, so I thought I would read you one of his poems, but also I thought I'd read you a little bit of the Welsh later on so you can get an understanding of the Welsh Um poetry and the technique that's kind of been missed from the translation. I think they've kind of carried it over, but not really. Um, so here we go. A prayer to St. Doinwen. Doinwen, your beauty like the hose frost tears from your chalice with its blazing waxen candles. Well, does your golden image know how to assuage the griefs of wretched man? What man soever would keep vigil in his choir, a holy shining pilgrimage, you with Ingrid's radiance. There is no sickness nor heart sorrow from which he would carry with him thence from Llanfwyth. Llanfwyth. Your holy parish is your struggling flock. A man sorrowful and warm with care I am. Because of longing for my mistress. Oh, there we go. Um, my heart is swollen up with love, deep pangs grounded in anxiety. As well know this, my milady, unless I can win Morved, uh, I remain alive, it is, but life in vain. Make me be healed, you most deserving of all praise, from my infirmity and feebleness. From one year be both messenger of love, as well as meditatress, he's definitely made up a word for that one, of God's grace to man. Did he make it up in the original Welsh? No. Hmm. There is no need for you, unfailing golden image, of be afraid of sin, the body's ever-present snare. God does not undo what he has once done. Good is his peaceful uh, disposition. You will not fall from heaven. No coquette will observe you now this year, whispering with us in narrow corner. No angry, jealous one, cruel-minded, will clutch into your back, chase-minded one. Come of your kindness, quiet, you will not be suspected. Virgin of enduring sympathy from Llandoyrwyn, a place of great resort. To come or grow, you gem of Christendom. God has not withheld you easily to be reconciled. The gift of ample speech, nor will man reject you unquestionably to the work of prayer god calls you black your wimple may god your host rest restrain the two hands of man may there be recalled the violence of the person who would ravish her when she would follow me through the leaves of maine doinwen if you would once cause 
Under May's trees and long summer days, her poets reward. Fair one, you would be good. For Doinwen, you were never base. Proof by gifts of splendid grace that you were prim, virgin, prudent Doinwen. Because of the penance that you did through goodness for the world for its significance, because of the devotions that you kept while you were alive, the faith of all those religious kind, because of the true dedications of man, of of none, sorry, slipping in a word there, and the virgin virginity of the fair captive flesh, for the soul's sake, for it is needful now, a brinant with the powerful strong arms implored by the agony caused by your faith of the sweet virgin to deliver me. Um, so from that you can kind of see that he's not beyond um, sort of, I don't know what you really call it, but um, getting the idea of getting on with a saint. Like, I mean, this is, even now that's a bit kind of OTT, isn't it? And um, yeah, he was doing that back in, 14th century thereabouts so um he's a bit of a wild one but I think the thing that's quite interesting and the thing that you kind of miss from the English reading you, you kind of hear it a little bit there's some o's that are repeated is a kind of assonance and a kind of repetition of the first sort of letters of um a word that's kind of a Welsh technique um so Doinwen degra aron delch, da i gwer o gor flamai felch. So, alliteration there. Dear doireth aur doi gwethau, digon doiren, digon draur, din an gwylio, gloirwyr glan. So, there's been a mutation there, but that's um repetition of G or ur sort of sound in the middle of the words. In Diagor Dinag Iran, Nid Ois Glefid na Brin Broint, a El Guinio o Glandor. And I think I'm, I'm slipping in a different Welsh village there, but never mind. Um, but yeah, it kind of goes on like different parts of um, the poem. He usually repeats D I Do. Um, or tro don i bara da wen o bir dain wen yeah so it's kind of um and I think it has the kind of treading sort of uh or a little bit on those makes the poetry sort of more forced but maybe that's my reading of the Welsh um sort of like you're going through the motions of some things but that's my interpretation of it um yeah and it sort of speeds the poem on um through those bits and like smooths you through those bits and it i suppose in some ways it adds emphasis because um the start of the the poem oh, my, my phone is making so many noises um but the it's to Doinwen and then repeating that um those consonants and those sounds that make up her her um name it adds even more emphasis that it's to her at those points of the poem um so I think that's quite an interesting technique I mean if you could think of it um in English if you think of an English name, Alice, if you go Alice alive in Alsance or something, you know, you, you, you're you adding on emphasis just around the main components of Alice's name, then it's adding an emphasis, drawing attention to that name. Or if you think of a acrostic poem, if you're um, doing it to... Oh, God, my phone. If you're doing it to... Um, the start of the poem is um, adding a secret message. It's kind of the same thing. It's like emphasising the message to that person's uh, name. Anyway, this is the first long video I've done and I will try to get a better setup because my hand hurts. <laughs> so, and the noises of the phone are beeping, so that's a wee bit annoying. Um, but there we go. That's one poem slightly analysed and 
read out. There we go.